Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. I'm here with the Celestron rig right now. The Celestron, it's sitting on the CGX mount and the 11 inch uh, Edge HD uh, here. I recently uh, purchased the Star Sense Auto Guider. Uh, it, it is a system that's supposed to auto guide this rig automatically. And I also have the focus motor. I had that for a while now. I just also acquired the power hub. It's a four port power hub. And it also has four ports for the uh, dew straps or the dew heater ring. And I do have the dew heater ring attached to the front of the uh, scope itself. So how's everything working? I put it to the test with the Helix Nebula. And the camera that I used in this test was the uh, ZWO ASI 071 a one-shot color camera and it has a large pixel size 4.8 I think it is somewhere on there I got it up here on the screen uh, uh, so it's a large pixel so I have the option do I want to go binning one or binning two one by one or two by two uh, if I had a smaller pixel size obviously two by two but I think I can get away with the uh, one by one but I'm not in the F10 mode I'm in the F7 mode I have the Celestron a 0.7x reducer attached to the uh, back of the scope. So let's see how all this works. The target was the Helix Nebula. Did I get a good view of this? Well, I think I did. Let's take a look. Okay, the first thing we want to do is connect the CPWI to the telescope. There we go. Opening up CPWI on telescope number one usually takes a little bit, about 10 seconds, for this to fire up. There it goes. And I like to go into all sky view, show all sky. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is connect with a USB connection. And I'm going to uh, not unpark because I moved the uh, scope around a little bit. So I'm going to go to do a realign. And the first thing I'm going to do is I got the choices of manual alignment, star sense alignment, quick align. Quick align is pretty good if you have it uh, already kind of like centered and so forth. You can get away with that without the star alignment. Uh, last alignment or load alignment, we can do that too, but I didn't save anything. So you know, go to star sense alignment. So we're going to use the new star sense sensor and do the star sense alignment and begin alignment. Alignment. <laughs> All right. And it says... Uh, is the mount ready to move to the home switches? It certainly is. Now, if you don't have the CGX or the CGXL, uh, you're going to make sure that the, your mount is set to the alignment points on the uh, the outside portion of the mount itself. But uh, this has the uh, switches already auto automatically aligned, so um, it'll go right to them. So it's going to home the mount and it's ready. Uh, do you um, want to? Calibrate the uh, star sense camera. I already calibrated it, so it should be okay But if you have not had calibrated you need to calibrate the star sense alignment. So let's go to ready And I already have the mount polar line, so I don't need to go through that again. So we'll say no And let's do a four-point alignment that goes through all four quadrants of the sky And I'll find a star in those alignment areas. Let's go back to this sky show all sky it's going to do a search in the first quadrant, the second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. And to get a four-point alignment on those four points. Um, and it does it automatically. It, this whole system is, is probably less than three minutes. So I'm just going to, I already found the first point. It also helps to have a clear sky. And I do have a clear sky. It usually takes these, these four cardinal points. Um, it almost forms a, a hex, a, a rectangle here. Um, point one, two, three, and four. It'll be a square. Providing that there's no obstructions to view uh, in this area. And in my particular example, all these views should be available. Even though in the southeast quadrant, I will be cutting it close with that holly tree. I had to go over the uh, meridian flip on the uh, the mount. All right, it's going to form. Find this next point, almost perfect square there. Looking, 
found it. And now go down to, you can see it's, it's, it's forming a perfect square. And uh, uh, assuming that you have no uh, obs uh, uh, obstruction to the uh, sky, it, it'll do it. Otherwise, it'll look for some other point. Searching and seeking and found it. So I'm, I'm, I'm aligned. So I should be able to go to a target uh, and it should be able to find it. All right. So I just go exit. Now the next thing I want to do is load the, go to the settings over here and connect the focuser. And uh, should find it pretty fast. There it is. And, and then I'm going to go to the dew heater. Connect that should find it there it is now if I click on the do heater and go to overview I'll get everything uh, it'll show me the power going out to the do straps or to the do heater ring um, and it will also show me the voltage power uh, on the variable power output but I, it's not connected so but if you had like a, a DSLR camera you want to uh, do an 8 volt connection to that you can uh, connect that uh, make sure you have it set to 8 volts but the, there you have it. And then the other uh, three ports, the 12 volt power supply out. Um, you can see I have uh, one connected right over here. Um, I think that, what is that? That's the, um, um, that's the star sense. Okay. And then the other one, the USB ports, shows you that USB port three is connected and it's sending out four, four tenths of a watt. So no big deal there. All right, outside temperature is 77 degrees, dew point 73. So it shows me the total uh, voltage going out, which is 12.53, which is no big deal. The amperage, which is the biggie, uh, only 1.3 amps. And this goes all the way up to 20, or uh, so this, power supply, this power supply is 15 amps. So I got plenty of power available to go out to the system. All right, but I'm not totally connected yet. So let's connect the cameras and the other devices uh, to the system. All right, so CPWI is fully connected. So let's go into Nina or your favorite uh, uh, software. All right, it's found the camera, the uh, ZWO ASI 071. I'm going to connect that. I'm going to start the cooling. I'm going to take it down to 10 degrees below zero Celsius. All right, I got to connect the telescope first. Connect a telescope, CPWI. See, I have the choices here, uh, CPWI and uh, connect. All right, telescope is connected. I close these. Now I'll go back to the, um, well, let's do the focuser first. Uh, you have to have CPWI connected before you can get all these other devices connected. So the, uh, the choices are um, all these different choices for focusers that I've had in the past. I got a Pegasus focusers on my other telescopes, but I want the CPWI focuser right there. And it's already selected, so I'll just say select. Well, select. Okay, it's selected. Next thing I want to do is go into the guider and uh, I want to go to that direct guider. We'll connect. Again, I wish they had the CPWI ASCOM um, available for that, but it's not available yet for the SSAG. Hopefully that'll be something uh, in the future. Anyway, for right now, I'm at a direct guider. That way I can dither uh, the uh, telescope uh, at command. Well, the target's not up yet. Let's, let's go into um, CPW or um, uh, Nina and, and select a target. It's going to be the Helix Nebula. That's what I'm after over here. So I'm going to type it in, Helix. All right. There it is right there, the eye of God. And you can see right here, here's my time. There's those trees, and it doesn't come up until uh, 1045, 1048 this evening. Um, so I still have an hour and 45 minutes before I can get to this target. All right. So it's kind of ready to go. I'm going to set the target options. So let's go. Uh, I'm not going to slew to the center because I'm going to let CPWI do that. 1042, 10, 1045, clears that tree right there. Okay, so I'm going to put this on pause and I'll come back when the target is in view. Okay, it's now approaching 11 o'clock and I, while waiting for the Helix Nebula to get through the trees, I 
pointed the telescope nearby at an uh, object called Messier 2. It's a globular cluster. And here it is right here. And uh, let's take a look at it a little bit closer. And let's zoom in on that. There you can see uh, it's doing a pretty good job. I'm doing uh, 180 seconds on this. And uh, it's um, the system is tracking very well. As you can see, I, I'm even picking up double stars here. You can see it, it's resolving these double stars over here. So I'm, I'm very pleased so far with this. So um, enough with this. I'm going to hit stop here on M2. And we're going to go into, um, first of all, I'll bring that back out, uh, to, there's the tracking, uh, CPWI. Uh, very good tracking. I mean, one to one and a half. I mean, that's really good tracking for, for the uh, Celestron at F7. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go into, uh, I'm just going to stop this. Uh, I'm going to go into the uh, find target local database. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. I could do it through Nina. I want to try it first of all, though, through CPWI and see how well the star since auto guider uh, does it in, in, in finding its target. So um, going to the Helix Nebula right there and looking at the uh, sky view, show all of sky. And um, there it is down there just below Saturn. That's Saturn there. And there's the Helix Nebula there. Here I am right there as M2. So it's not going to take long to get there, but let's see if it gets there. So let's go to the target. So it's going to the target right now. And the star sense is going to pick up on that. You'll see the error, the message coming up here. Uh, going to precise go to. Now this is a function as to how well you have your star sense aligned. Uh, I think I aligned it the other day, but we'll see. Um, it might be off a little bit because M2 was off just a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go into imaging uh, over here into um, Nina. And uh, let's just do a, a, a quick 10 second image and just see what it was. Now, in the process, I did change the filter from the Optolong L Enhanced to the Optolong L Pro. L Pro lets a little bit more light in than the L Enhanced. The L Enhanced really just uh, restricts me down to the H Alpha and the, um, uh, well, look at that, the O3. It's pretty well centered. It's pretty close, but I want it precise because I'm going to be stacking a lot of this. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go into um, Nina. Well, first, I'm going to go over here and turn off precise tracking for the moment because it'll be fighting Nina. All right, I'm going to just turn that off for now and uh, go back over here. Going into Nina, and I have the sequence all set up now. I have the uh, center target. I'm going to turn that on, uh, start guiding. I cannot do an autofocus because I have the uh, uh, extender on, the, not the extender, the um, reducer on, and uh, I have the basically the focus all the way out, so I can't do an autofocus. I have to do a manual focus, but as you just saw, the focus was pretty much on, so I, I don't have to worry too much about autofocus. All right, yeah, the mirror is all the way to the back. Oh, so anyway, um, let's do this. Let's say go. I think everything's set. Okay, I'm going to uh, I, I turn the meridian flip off. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. All right, so here we go. Slew to the target. Like I say, it's already on target, so it won't take much time. Let's go into imaging here. Let's bring this over to here. It's going to bring this over to here. I think it's off just a little bit. I got to fine tune that. Star Sense Auto Guider. But then again, Nina does a really good job. It's using, see now, the Star Sense is using the, the Star Sensor to center the object, uh, whereas Nina is using the actual telescope to center the object. And let's see how the first exposure comes in. Let's see if it moves. There it is. And as far as um, Nina is concerned, I'm done. 
I'm centered. Let's start recording. So here we go. Well, what I got to do is go over into, um, I forgot to do this. So this first image is going to be bad because I didn't turn on the tracking. Uh, when you use Nina, you got to manually turn on the tracking. So see, it's off right there. So I turn that on. But now over here, I have the auto meridian flip. Now, when the target passes the meridian and the system does the meridian flip, if you leave it into um, CPWI, it'll flip it, center it in with the uh, StarSense Auto Guider, SSAG, and, uh, and then it'll automatically turn the guiding back on. If you use the uh, Nina to do the flip, it will not turn the guiding on, so you will have no guiding. So let's look at the uh, graph, and yeah, we're tracking. All right, all right. So this first picture, they see that first picture is going to be off because uh, uh, I wasn't guiding, and uh, which makes sense. But this, the, the the system is centered, the target is centered. All right, so let's go into Nina image history and just go bad. You're bad. All right, there's the um, M2 that I was taking pictures of right there. See, it was off a little bit too. See, it should have been right there. It was off a little bit there. So my, my star sense is off just a little bit, just a little bit. I mean, not bad considering this is F7, uh, focal length of around 2,000 millimeters. <laughs> That's not bad at all. But if you want precise, if you're going to be tracking, particularly if you're doing a, a meridian flip, uh, the target will be over here after the meridian flip, and then you would lose a lot of this outer edging uh, when you do the stacking. All right, we're coming up to the uh, first 182nd or three minute image of the Helix Nebula, and there it is. Looks pretty good. And one look at the, one last look at the tracking before I, um, before I leave for the, for the evening hours. Uh, it's going to be on automatic after this, but looking at the tracking, it's doing very well. Um, between, well, 0.25 and 1.5, but mostly between 1 and minus 1. It's, it's tracking very well. Um, and as you can see, the results are showing up nice, clean, round stars, particularly in the center of the view here. I mean, that, lo that looks pretty good. I have the Optolong L Pro filter on this uh, view this time. So there we have it. So, uh, okay, let's call it a night for me anyway. Now, I got to tell you, that's CPWI. I really like it a lot. Um, still, you, know, you got to have this thing perfectly aligned, the StarSense Auto Guider, with the, uh, the, the plane of the uh, focus and the plane of this focus have to be perfect for this to work perfectly. Otherwise, like I, I do myself, I work with the uh, Nina to do the plate solving so I can get it smack dab middle on this lens. It's, it's in the smack dab middle right here on the uh, guider lens, but more important is the, the telescope lens because that's where the camera's looking through. So, so that will help out a lot once I get this thing perfectly aligned. You know, the primary reason I bought this telescope was for planetary, uh, because you need a, a, a long focal length, and this has a focal length of uh, 2,800 millimeters. Now, with the reducer on, it's down to about just around 20 or, or 2,000, 2,000 or 2,000 millimeters, uh, which I'm using for, uh, well, uh, uh, globular clusters, M2, for example. I was testing on that last night, and also for the, uh, like the ring nebula. And of course the Helix Nebula that I just shot last night. So things are looking good. Uh, I, I'm really liking this auto guider. It's, it's really doing some good guiding. So uh, with that being said, you know, the heavens are just filled with majestic wonders. You don't really need a monster like this to view the heavens. Uh, first of all, all you need is your eyes to look up in the sky at night. But if you have a small telescope or binoculars, you can see quite a bit of activity and, and, and views up in the sky. But with the telescopes and then, of course, with the tracking and time lapse, so you can get a lot more information. It's just exciting, an exciting hobby to be involved with and, and to share it with you. And I love sharing it. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel so you'll be notified when I put new videos up. Thanks for watching and remember the heavens are just filled with 
majestic wonders, and they're all in the sky near you. So unless you need rain, and I got some on the way, so I'm going to cover this up right after I finish this. Unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.